welcome to the sci-fi and fantasy edition of Incoming, the video podcast that looks back at the week's miniature releases in the sci-fi and fantasy genres. This is episode 15, which looks back at the releases for week ending the 15th of January 2010, and I'm your host Neil Shook. Well, there have been lots and lots of new releases this week, so it's been fairly difficult to pick a top 10. And quite a bit of chopping and changing going on, especially in the low order. However, we're there now, so I'll give you my top 10 favourite miniatures of this week. So first off, weighing in at number 10, and this is almost a cheat, as it's actually a re-release of a miniature. My only excuse is the fact that I actually haven't seen this before, and when I saw it, I was really excited. This is from Blood Moon Miniatures, and this is a Jabberwocky. Now, I remember seeing the Jabberwocky film uh, when I was all in my late teens i think so this figure has a bit of nostalgia for me in it it's a fabulous looking figure though isn't it big as well so the last shot in this particular three gives an example of what it's like against a 28 mil figure great detail captures the look of the creature absolutely fantastically not too sure how many game systems use a jabberwocky these days but it's just a fantastic movie isn't it great stuff Number nine, and one of several new releases this week from Cypher Studios for the Anima Tactics range of miniatures that they're producing for Fancy Flight games. This is my favourite of their selection, and this is Claude. Typical fantasy character with an unfeasibly large sword, but I'm a bit of a sucker for characters in full plate armour, and it's a nice enough figure. Number eight, and a new company. This is a company called Terranosis, and they're producing... Fancy miniatures in an unusual range in the fact that they're producing figures in 54 mil. First off, we have their first releases, which is a pair of skeletal warriors. Also, following on from that, look for pre order, we have their figure of a Reaper. Slightly unusual Grim Reaper, especially, but looking at these models, it's a very promising start for a new company. Unusual scale, 54 mil, not one that everybody games in. Awesome for large, impressive skirmish games. The Reaper models especially I really like. Chock full of detail and character. As I say, the Reaper's almost like a zombie as opposed to uh, a skeleton, which is a a slightly different take on it, I think. But they just really impressed me. Uh, Well worth a look. It's Terranosis. Next up at number 7, we have a couple of new releases from Fantasation Miniatures. These are for the Rusted Hero Skirmish game, and they're both sculpted by Tom Mason. First up on the left, we have a new Medusa. Typical Gorgon armed with bow and arrow. However, she's also available with an optional sword and sheath. 32 mil tall figure. Secondly, the guy on the right is a guy called Sir Shanning, Hedge Knight Mercenary Leader, who is for the Rusted Heroes Mercenary Faction. Again, 32 mil tall. And I suppose both of these figures, while they're not outstanding examples of fantasy figures, I think they're you know, pretty good. Well worth checking out, I think. I don't know anything uh, really about the Rusted Heroes game, but these look pretty decent miniatures for it. So, uh, as I say, I think worth looking at. Number six, we feature the only release from Reaper this week in my top ten. Reaper have released several new figures this week. Lots of really nice ones, actually, but I decided at the end of the day just to feature this one. And this is uh, quite an unusual figure, isn't it? I mean, this is... A Batholan Centurion, sculpted by Kevin Williams. I just thought this was an awesome looking figure. Reminds you a little bit of a Tyranid, possibly something out of uh, H.P. Lovecraft. <sighs> just a really awesome looking, gribbly, spiky monster. Uh, it just appealed to me, really. So, that's number six. On to the top five, and at number five we have one of a couple of new releases this week from Spartan Games. And uh, rather disappointingly, this is the only release this week which has anything to do with dwarves. There were a few comments passed about uh, just how many dwarves featured in my last show. But as I say, only the one this week. This is the new Iron Dwarf Dirigible, or Airship, for the Uncharted Seas range. Now this is a complete re-sculpt from some of their earlier designs. I think you'll agree this is an awesome looking ship, isn't it? Not sure the exact size of this, but I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it. Great new addition for my dwarf fleet. Unfortunately, on the downside, the wings don't actually fold out at all. Don't know if they're actually producing uh, another model with the wings folded out. I doubt it because of moulding issues, but remains to be seen. Even so, great figure for dwarves. And 
While we're on the subject of Spartan games, I just wanted to mention this particular figure as well. This is the new Shroud Mage Heavy Cruiser. I don't play Shroud Mages, but I quite like this ship, and uh, I'll let you into a little secret. I saw this while it was being sculpted, because it's sculpted by a good friend of mine, Colin Haygreen. And I think he's done a, a pretty good job in capturing the essence of the Shroud Mages as Spartan have produced so far. Nice stuff, Colin. Looking forward to your next one, mate. Number four, and uh, a new release from Gaspers Arts. This is uh, their Chaos uh, Fantasy Football Team, because we can't say Blood Bowl anymore, can we? A set of high-class, high-quality, a set of very well-sculpted, high-quality miniatures, these. Every figure comes with several different options when it comes to different heads, several different arms, a selection of eight different miniatures. Several of them, you know, fully poseable. You can move the torso around on on some legs, various other bits and pieces. Uh, just a great looking set of miniatures for a Chaos team. Really nicely sculpted. My particular favourite is actually the guy who, as you may have seen, is here in three point stance and pointing. You know, that guy, given the right gear, could easily be a centre in a standard game. That's just a fantastic pose. Really like these. Chaos teams are not my favourite. I mean, they're definitely. Uh, Although, you know, if you want to play a miniature, you've got to have a Chaos team, haven't you? But I think this is just a great release from Gaspers. Superbly detailed miniatures. But yeah, only my number four. On to my number three, and a preview that's got me really excited from Wargames Factory. And they've just previewed their upcoming sci-fi infantry in great coats. Don't these look fantastic? Okay, they have uh, an amalgamation of retro World War II and a Jinro feel to them. Having said all that, I haven't seen too much like these before. Okay, they're a little bit like Death Guard, but for my money, they've got the mix of influences just right. And if they can come out with a decent set of plastic miniatures in this particular style, I think these are going to sell huge. I really do. I love this figure. Whether you're looking at Miniatures for pseudo-imperial guard, something to go alongside your pig iron troopers or what have you. I think these are going to be great. Really looking forward to seeing some more of these. Excellent stuff from Wargames Factory. So to number two, and new release from Weird Miniatures. We just started releasing new figures for the new year for their Malifaux range. These are the first, and these are a pack of three Ronin. What can you say, really? I mean, they're kind of sci-fi cowboy samurai. Just what you want. They're always going to be popular. I mean, even better, I suppose, because they're female. But uh, fantastic looking figures. I mean, Weird have always produced some really good looking miniatures. And obviously, you know, Malifaux has really taken off as one of the games of choice from last year. Not too sure if I'm going to get into it yet, but I'll have to wait and see. But some excellent figures again from Weird Miniatures. Really good stuff. Exciting. Makes you want to play the game. Which carries me on to my number one. And this is a new release from Crocodile. Now, Crocodile, known for their War Gods of Egyptus range. New releases within the War Gods range. Uh, something a little bit more unusual, as you don't normally find these in the desert. Here we have four of their Ice Warriors. Along with them, you then have an Abominable Snow Beast and a Summoner. As soon as I saw these figures, I was just bowled over by them. Beautiful. Really well sculpted. Excellently detailed. Bags and bags of character. I mean, the whole thing them came, these huge swords made out of ice. The whole look of them. I mean, yes, they look like the Wampa from Star Wars. <laughs> Which, I suppose, is part of the appeal. They're great. I really, really like them. As I say, you got the Ice Warriors, who did the small version. Then you've got the, the Abominable Snow Beast, which is the big one. Excellent stuff. For me... By far, miniature of the week. As I say, I mean, you just look at them, they look like they're going to be really easy to paint, really easy to get a really great finish, as you can see here. Fantastic miniatures from Crocodile. Well worth the number one this week. Really inspirational stuff. So there you have it. That's my top ten for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've seen something you like. Before I go, I just want to say a, a huge thank you to Bill and the Miniatures page and Zach at Tabletop Gaming News. Without these two guys' websites, this podcast simply wouldn't be possible if you want to catch up on old episodes you can always catch them at war Beats tv just go to the bottom of the page so all that should be said is thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it 
Take care until next week. Happy gaming. I'll chat to you soon. Bye.